Hello everyone, I am Dr. Zubair Ashraf. I am a consultant pulmonologist and today we will be discussing another important topic. Uh, some of you may be able to guess the topic by looking at this ultrasound image. Others will get to know soon. Okay, so I will start this with a clinical scenario. A 60 years old male presents in pulmonology OPD with progressive shortness of breath and weight loss for two months. He has been a smoker for 40 pack years and used to work as a plumber. So this is a scenario with the, uh, an elderly male presenting with shortness of breath. So shortness of breath, or differential of shortness of breath should be in your mind. And uh, the presentation is for two months. The history is of two months. So this is sort of sub-acute presentation. Nothing acute in this scenario. And there are some risk factors given. The patient is a smoker and the patient also works or used to work as a plumber. So moving on to examination, on respiratory examination, there is dull percussion note and reduced breath sounds in left lower chest. So on which side uh, the breath sounds are reduced? On the left side. So that means there is pathology on the left side. And the dull percussion note that also points to the cause of this uh, presentation. This is the X-ray. What is the most likely radiological diagnosis? If you have seen my previous uh, X-ray videos, you should be able to identify what is the abnormality on this X-ray. So if we have a look, then there is on the left side, there is a homogeneous opacification in the left middle and lower zone. And uh, you cannot see left diaphragm, you cannot see the left heart border. And the upper border of this opacification is concave with meniscus sign that laterally is it is going upwards along the chest wall. So this is a typical finding of pleural effusion. Left side pleural effusion is there in this X-ray. The other clinical signs, dull percussion note also point to pleural effusion. Sometimes there will be mention of stony dull percussion note in the scenario. Pleural effusion is the radiological diagnosis, but pleural effusion is not the final diagnosis. This, this means that we have to find the cause of pleural effusion. Just merely saying that this patient has got pleural effusion is not enough. You have to find the cause and treat it accordingly. Let's discuss uh, a little bit about anatomy of pleural space. The pleural space is a potential space between two pleural surfaces. Visceral pleura is attached to the outer surface of lungs and parietal pleura is attached to the inner surface of chest wall. So the potential space, the intrapleural space is the pleural cavity. Usually there is very small amount of fluid in this pleural space, 0.13 ml per kg of body weight for a person of 60 to 70 kilogram of weight, that amount uh, comes to be around 8 to 9 ml. So roughly you can say in a normal person, 8 to 10 ml of pleural fluid is there. There is a balance between production and drainage. Continuously fluid is produced and it is being drained at the same speed. So that is the reason why there is usually in a normal person, there is no accumulation of fluid. When does the pleural effusion develop? Pleural effusion develop due to imbalance between production and drainage. Either there is uh, more production than normal or the drainage is defective. So what happens is that uh, initially the fluid starts to accumulate in the pleural space and with time, the pleural effusion gets bigger and bigger. It causes the lung to collapse and to shift towards the hilum. And one, once the pleural effusion becomes massive, it can push the mediastinum towards the opposite side. The symptoms of pleural effusion dip will depend upon how much the how much fluid is there. In mild effusion, the patient may be asymptomatic as the fluid becomes more and more the accumulation and uh, continues to yeah. accumulate then uh, there is breathlessness there can be dry cough pleuritic chest pain which is usually due to pleural inflammation and there can be chest heaviness or 
pain refer to the shoulder or abdomen which is usually due to irritation of the diaphragm and phrenic nerve involvement then moving to signs the clinical examination on clinical examination you will find reduced chest expansion and reduced reduce movement reduced vocal parameters stony dull percussion note stony dull percussion note is the most important finding because the other finding of reduced chest expansion and movement you can find in any pathology whether it is a pneumothorax it is a pneumonia uh, or it's pleural thickening or mass the uh, the chest expansion and movement will be reduced on that side wherever the pathology is so you will uh, you can differentiate between other pathologies and pleural effusion on the basis of percussion note dull percussion note or stony dull percussion note you, you will find that uh, the breath sounds are uh, absent or reduced and there can be bronchial breathing above the fluid level due to collapse of the underlying lung when there is small effusion you can find a friction rub as well which indicates pleuritis this is a normal chest x ray and when you compare it with uh, and act with this x ray you can clearly see that uh, there is uh, a homogeneous opacification in the left middle and lower zone with concave upper border so pleural effusion will be homogeneous because there is fluid the density will be same throughout the opacity will be uh, of uniform or homogeneous consistency meniscus sign a, li a little bit about that when you put water in a glass then there is meniscus sign around the edges or near the glass wall the water moves up a little bit this is the meniscus similarly you can see this meniscus sign here on the x ray as well this is typical of a pleural effusion a flow free flowing pleural effusion similarly here on this x ray as well you can see there is effusion on the right side sometimes effusion can be loculated like this this you can see is making a d sign or an inverted d sign if it is along the right chest wall it will make a d sign like this on the left side it will make an inverted d sign it is not free flowing you can see yeah. part of the diaphragm so that means that uh, the effusion is loculated here while here you can see the free flowing effusion next test which you can do is thoracic ultrasound ultrasound can be used for quantification of fluid how much fluid is there characterization uh, what is the type of the fluid whether it is loculated or not and uh, whether uh, it has any debris in it or if there is is there any septation inside and it can help in aspiration of the fluid as well you can localize the fusion and uh, aspirate it and uh, it can help in taking the biopsies as well so here in this image you can see this black shadow this is fusion this white line is diaphragm and this is collapsed lung so if in an exam scenario you are asked what is the best test to diagnose pleural effusion then ultrasound is the best test it can pick up even small amount of fluid as well so it is its uh, sensitivity is better than the x ray and the ultrasound can help us in characterization of the fluid if the fusion can be anechoic you, you can see it is jet black and sometime it can be echogenic you can see white spots inside and sometime it can be septated these are the septa septated and echogenic effusion is always exudative and echoic effusion can be transudative or early exudative as well so it the ultrasound is very helpful in, in characterization of fluid then the next test you can do is a ct scan ct scan is not needed to confirm the presence of effusion but it can help you identify help you to to identify 
the cause of vision for example uh, there can be malignancy which you can pick up on ct scan there can be pleural thickening or mesothelioma which you can you are able to pick on ct scan as i said earlier pleural effusion is not the final diagnosis you have to do further work up to find the cause so how do you do that work up you have to take some fluid out by using ultrasound guidance and local anesthesia under aseptic technique a needle is inserted and fluid is drained usually it is recommended to drain up to 50 ml for diagnostic purposes but you can drain more as well if the patient is breathless and you want to give the patient some symptomatic relief so up to 1500 ml or 1.5 liter can be drained physical appearance can help us in uh, identifying the cause if it is gross pus then that means it is an empyema then we do some biochemical test and um uh, in which we check uh, white blood cell count neutrophil and uh, lymphocyte percentages that can help in identifying whether it is paranormonic effusion or it is tuberculous microbiological test again can help you in identifying the organism cytology is done to identify any malignant cell in malignant pleural effusion cell counts as i have already told you uh biochemistry you can you also see with the protein count and ldh and glucose as well that also helps us in differentiating between exudative and transudative effusion ph is used to identify empyema because if ph is less than 7.2 then uh, that is an indication for chest intubation drainage of pleural fluid so pleural effusion can be transudative if the uh, protein is less than 2.5 g per deciliter or it can be exudative if it is more than 3.5 g per deciliter if it is between 2.5 to 3.5 then the more accurate way to differentiate between transudative and exudative is the lights criteria it has got three points number one is pleural fluid protein to serum protein ratio more than 0.5 pleural fluid ldh to serum ldh ratio more than 0.6 and pleural fluid ldh is more than 2/3 the upper limit of normal so if any one of these points are met if any one of these points is met then that means that uh, the effusion is exudative if all three are not fulfilled then that means the effusion is transudative so on the basis of this criteria you can differentiate between exudative and transudative effusion transudative effusion are produced due to increased hydrostatic pressure or reduced on cortic pressure most commonly it is due to heart failure in a patient who has known case of heart disease ejection fraction is reduced on x ray you can see a dilated heart on examination you can see raised gavp and bilateral pedal edema pitting edema then that means the patient the fusion is due to heart failure first it is on the right side and then later on it can be bilateral as well in these patient you do not need to do the pleural aspiration similarly in chronic liver disease due to hypoproteinemia hypoalbuminemia and uh, in uh, nephrotic syndrome renal failure you can uh, see transudative pleural effusion while in exudative pleural effusion it is usually due to a cause in the chest it can be due to increased capillary permeability or impaired fluid resorption pneumonia and empyema due to pneumonia are the most more common causes similarly in tuberculosis and malignancies as well you can see uh, exudative pleural effusion in connective tissue diseases pulmonary embolism and asbestos related effusion as well then there are certain tests which can help you in identifying the cause adenosine demyelinase level or ada levels are increased in tuberculous pleural effusion cholesterol levels triglyceride levels chylomicrons these can be increased in chylothorax or pseudochylothorax effusion 
hematocrit can be used to identify hemothorax amylase is increased in uh, pancreatitis related diffusion ana in pleural fluid can be uh, used to identify sle related diffusion and r factor in rheumatoid arthritis so this was briefly about what is pleural diffusion how pleural fluid is formed and how do you investigate the cause of pleural effusion if you have any questions you can uh, write them in the comments and in the part 2 of this pleural effusion video we will discuss management of pleural 